Welcome back everyone to another episode of Top 10 Fact Series. Today we're going to be talking about Futurama. Fact number one is that Jurassic Park was almost about Fry's mum. Jurassic Park was the standout classics from the show's original run. Episodes featuring Fry's past are always an interesting setup, but this one knocked it out of the park. With some great running gags and Bender sticking to the right side of offensive, it's certainly the episode with the most emotion, but if the original idea had been done, it could have been even more depressing. Before it was Fry's dog was fossilized, the episode was meant to focus on Fry's mother. That's right, instead of Seymour growing old and missing Fry, it would be his mum who was eventually written as distant and football obsessed. Obviously the writers must have realised that this might push a bit too depressing a bit a lot further, you know, and decided to tone it back a little even though it was still really depressing and very emotional, which is in my opinion, probably one of my favourite episodes of Futurama. Fact number two is that the body switching has a real solution. The solution to all the body swapping in the prison of Bender may seem painfully obvious, throw two people in and you can just cycle around into this ride, but with some pernickety fans, the writers didn't want to take any chances, so they actually created the mathematical theorem to actually prove it. The Futurama theorem was made by Ken Keeler, one of the show's writers and he had a PhD in applied maths. You can see on a screenshot of the episode above, but it's not as complicated as it actually may seem. The math is actually pretty logical. Fact number three is that the show creators actually had no idea which episode would actually be the end. With Matt Gronin shopping Futurama around to yet another network after Comedy Central dropped it, it seemed like we were doomed to live in a cycle of the show being constantly cancelled and then picked back up again. Back in 2003, when it was first cancelled, the writers weren't really sure what the last episode air was going to actually be, leaving lots of possibilities for a finale. In an audio commentary, the producers muse the sting, where Leela has a poison-induced hallucination that Fry actually dies. It actually would be an interesting one to end on. To viewers, it would look like they just killed off the main character. Fact number four is that Grover Cleveland actually has two heads. When Fry and Bender hide in the Heads Museum Hall of Presidents, all the major potters get a head upgrade, but oddly enough, Grove Cleveland pops up twice. You'd expect better from a show that just moments before went after to state the correct day of the week for 31st December 2999. Turns out this isn't animated slipping up, but the creator's hiding a non sci fi pun in the background. Cleveland served two non consecutive terms, so he has a head of each time he used in office. Fact number 5 is that Futurama was almost called Doomsville or Aloha Mars. According to Gronin, he raised a couple of different names, Aloha Mars and Doomsville. Now it may seem like they are only rubbish because we're so used to Futurama, but I wouldn't count on it. Those names were resoundingly rejected. The final titles come from the name of a stall at the 1939 New York World's Fair that actually show what life would be like in 20 years, so it actually is a pretty apt name. Fact number six is that the secret language had to be kicked up a lot of different times. Every fan's aware there's a secret language in Futurama, although squiggles in the background spell incredibly mundane statements. Their obsessive fans will sit down and decode. What the writers of the show didn't expect was for the code to be discovered as quick as it actually did, giving only the latter's drink. Fans had the cipher, known as Alienese, down within a couple of episodes. What isn't as well known is that there's a second much more complicated language, introduced to stump the fans. Instead of just switching letters for symbol here, the characters are numbers that need to be added to the previous letters placed in the alphabet. There were reports of a third language introduced in the show, but so far, no solution has actually been found, meaning it's probably just a bunch of gibberish. Fact number seven is that Futurama was actually inspired by the song from the incredible band called String. With all the varying futures presented in The Simpsons, You'd be forgiven for thinking Futurama was a long envisioned idea by Matt Gronin. In fact, the idea actually came from a very unexpected source. Futuristic animated comedy came to him while listening to Robot Blues by Scottish folk group The Incredible String Band. While initially there may not seem much to link the song to the show, there's actually a classical slant to a futuristic tale in both. Given Gronin and Cohen's love of sci-fi, it was probably more of a catalyst than a total inspiration. Although that shouldn't dampen its importance. Fact number eight is that Hermes wasn't actually meant to be Jamaican, and he was also called Dexter. More last minute than those what happened to Hermes, 
Originally named Dexter, he wasn't supposed to actually be Jamaican until Phil Lamar suddenly did it in recording. That's why his limbo past wasn't revealed until later. The writers needed time to create this new character. Fact number 9 is that there's a full length episode of the Hypnotoad. Who'd have thought such a one note character would have become one of the most enduring elements of the future animal world? Hypnotoad's brief cameos in a few episodes has made it a fan favour across the internet. The extent producers made a special episode of the future's favourite show, Everybody Loves Hypnotoad. It's actually available on the Bender's Game DVD. Amazon Adventure features the Hypnotoad doing his thing against a white background, his eyes jiggling misadventures punctuated with typical sitcom establishing shots. Fact number 10 is that Cuba was meant to be there from the beginning, but he was a completely different character so the show had to pretty much cut him out because he was such an annoying character. Cuba is the professor's son slash clone. Even though he doesn't appear until the second season, he was actually always intended to be a part of the show, although not in the way he actually ended up. Unable to find a way to properly introduce him until a whole Cuba-centric episode became available, the clone was originally meant to be a bratty know-it-all who pointed out the show's many flaws, attended as a mirror of the show's fans. Beyond his first episode, Cuba was just too annoying, so he was toned down a lot, eventually set as a typical child of the professor. So that's for today's top 10 video. Thank you all for watching. If you have a suggestion for a new video idea, just leave them in the comments below. And yeah, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.